for this movie, we're going to talk about the uh, full vehicle version, which basically means the biggest feature has got is front and rear suspension together. And once you've got a rear suspension coupled with a the front, there's a lot more analysis you can do about handling and such. So um, you can see right here we got a front suspension. And if you want to add a rear suspension to a file, one way to do it is to go to your vehicle specs here and say suspension analyze. I've got a front and rear suspension. And now you can see we've got a new tab up here, rear suspension. And you got all your different types of rear suspensions. You could have your double A-arm and McPherson strut, sort of like, you know, what a European car might have, or a Corvette, like the C4 Corvette's got a double A-arm on the rear. Or your three links and four links, like uh, what the circle drag guys are used to. And uh, some, some independent rear suspensions down here, solid axle with leaf springs. Um, we got a four link here angled with angled arms, that would be like your metric chassis or your late model Mustangs and stuff. And then we have the four link with a lateral locator, and that's what we call a lateral locator, what keeps the uh, axle from moving left or right in the car. And we got a couple choices for that, um, Panard bar or J-bar or a Watts linkage. So let's go with uh, one of the three links here. And Panard bar, you can see we got Watts link here as an option. Uh, do you want to do something with the drive shaft, like pinion, drive shaft uh, length change, pinion angle change and stuff? We're going to say no. And do the springs attached to the actual housing itself or on the lower arm. And that would produce a slightly different wheel rate depending on which it attaches to, even though the location might be exactly the same because the axle might twist as it goes through roll and stuff. Um, what kind of springs you got? And you can see here we got the bell cranks or if you had a double A arm, you could your coils can be mounted to the upper arm like in the early Mustangs. Uh, we're not going to do that though. We're going to have it more normal. Do you have a roll bar? Yes or no. What's the roll bar rate? You can see that's way too small for this car. And again, there's a calc button and you could calculate out what um, the roll bar would be based on the roll bar diameter. The active length, that's basically the length of the bar that's twisting. Let's say that's 34 inches. And the arm length is from the bar up to where it attaches on the uh, on the A-arm, or in this case, on our axle itself. And that would be, let's say, 12 inches. And you can see this is the rear roll bar. And we got a 220-pound roll bar on the rear on this one. So anyway, um, so that's what you can do in, in this suspension, um, the vehicle spec screen. To specify, we got a rear suspension. Now you go over here and look. We got a rear suspension, but there's nothing there. We got to type in all these measurements about where the arms are lo located and stuff. Another way, if you've already measured your rear suspension, and if you haven't measured your rear suspension, this is the only way to do it. You've got to measure it out. Um, another way to do it, though, so let's say you've measured your rear suspension, but you've got it in a different file. The front suspension here is different than that file, but you want to copy a rear suspension from a different file. What you can do here is click on File and Open, and use this Selective Open feature, which is pretty handy. And what you're going to say is, I want to copy a rear suspension from a file and I know this one here has got a rear suspension in it and I want to use that suspension on the rear of the current vehicle I've got over here that I'm working on and you say well why would you have this option here well let's say you had that a double A arm front and rear you might want to copy a double A arm suspension that you had on the front end of one car and actually use it on the rear of another car so that's why we give you these the front and rear options here and let you intermix them and so I'm going to open that. Do I want to save my changes to this limited late model? I'm going to say no. I don't need to save it. And now it says, do you want to copy these specs in? I'm going to say yes. And now I'm going to go look at a rear suspension. And it's still a limited late model. Same front suspension as before. We've got that rear suspension we just opened up. It's got all this information in here. And you can see what else it's got is it's got this, see this sum oversteer rating? When you've got a front and rear suspension, you get some idea what the front to rear roll stiffness is of the car. And basic handling is the stiffer end of the car is the end that will break loose first. If you stiffen up the springs on the front, it's going to introduce a push more likely to understeer. You stiffen up the rear, uh, it's more likely for the rear to come around on you. It's going to get loose. And the reason for that is because whichever end of the car is stiffer will have more weight transfer 
and will more unevenly lo load the tires on that end of the car. And when you're overloading a tire, that tire is the one that tends to break loose quicker. So if you have a lot of weight transfer having in the rear, you're overloading that right rear tire, and you're unloading the left rear, and the car is going to come around on you. There's a couple ways of talking about the front to rear roll stiffness. The old-fashioned way, old school, was what is the wheel rate? On the front and the rear. And that was called front roll couple and rear roll couple. What is the front load st roll stiffness and the rear roll stiffness based on what's the wheel rates? And you can see here we got the total roll stiffness of the car. And if you go over on the rear suspension now, where is it? It's somewhere up here. It's got the roll stiffness. It's in here. I just can't see it right now. But it's got uh, the roll stiffness and it says 70. 4% of the roll stiffness is coming in the front, 26% is on the rear. A total of foot-pounds per, de per degree of about 1,400 pounds, foot-pounds per degree. What that means, if you put a torque wrench on the car and put 1,400 pounds of torque on the car, it would roll one degree. You put 2,800 pounds of torque on the car, it would roll two degrees. And how you get that torque is uh, based on where the center of gravity height is and when you're cornering and stuff. The other way, in more of a, a better, more accurate way, is what we call FLLD in our programs, front lateral load distribution. And it's very similar to this roll couple, except this also takes into account where the roll centers are. Because when you have weight transfer, some of the weight transfer is going through the springs, through roll and the roll bar and such, and some of it's going directly through the linkages. Uh, and depending on your roll center heights, that amount going through the linkages versus the springs can be quite different. And you can see here, um, even though this thing would say 74% of the roll stiffness is in the front, this thing here, the front lateral load distribution, based on the height of the front and rear roll centers, is saying it's pretty balanced. It's pretty much 50-50 front to rear. And it's calling it a little bit of an oversteer condition because based on the weight distribution front to rear, the program would like it to be a little different. But this is something that the, the um, I'll get into this in another movie, in the next movie. But anyway, this is something that you get when you got the front and rear together. And we go back to our front suspension, and you can see it's got these same numbers because this has to do with the front and the rear together. And... That concludes this first movie.